Baghdad burns, the fall of the Abbasid Caliphate. The rise of the Abbasid Caliphate. The Abbasid Caliphate, established in 750 CE, marked a golden age of Islamic civilization. The Abbasids overthrew the Umayyad Caliphate and established their capital in Baghdad, which soon became a center of learning, culture, and commerce. The early Abbasid period saw significant advancements in science, medicine, mathematics, and literature, as well as the flourishing of trade across the Islamic world. Decline of the Abbasid power. By the 10th century, the Abbasid Caliphate began to experience significant decline. Several factors contributed to this weakening of central authority, internal strife and fragmentation. The vast empire became increasingly difficult to govern, leading to internal strife and the rise of autonomous regional powers. Various dynasties, such as the Fatimids in Egypt and the Bayids in Persia, asserted their independence. Economic problems. The Abbasid Caliphate faced economic challenges, including declining agricultural productivity and the disruption of trade routes by rival powers and internal conflicts. Military challenges. The Abbasids relied heavily on mercenary armies, including Turkish soldiers known as Mamluks, whose loyalty was often questionable. This reliance on foreign troops further weakened the central authority. Cultural and religious tensions. The Abbasid Caliphate had to navigate complex cultural and religious dynamics within its diverse population. Sectarian divisions, particularly between Sunni and Shia Muslims, created additional tensions. The rise of the Seljuks. In the mid 11th century, the Seljuk Turks emerged as a dominant force in the Islamic world. The Seljuks, who were originally nomadic tribes from Central Asia, converted to Islam and quickly expanded their territory. In 1055, the Seljuk leader Tukrul Beg entered Baghdad and took control, effectively reducing the Abbasid caliphs to figurehead rulers. The Seljuks maintained the Abbasid Caliphate as a symbolic religious authority, while exercising real political and military power. The Mongol Invasion The most devastating blow to the Abbasid Caliphate came from the east in the form of the Mongol Invasion. The Mongols, a nomadic people from the steppes of Central Asia, had established a vast and powerful empire under the leadership of Genghis Khan. After his death, his successors continued to expand the Mongol Empire. The rise of Hulagu Khan. Hulagu Khan, a grandson of Genghis Khan, was tasked by his brother, the great Khan Munka, to conquer the Islamic world and expand Mongol dominion. Hulagu set out on his campaign in the 1250s, bringing with him a massive and well-organized army. The Siege of Baghdad. In 1258, Hulagu Khan turned his attention to Baghdad, the heart of the Islamic world and the seat of the Abbasid Caliphate. Despite warnings and pleas for assistance, the Abbasids were ill-prepared to face the Mongol threat. Hulagu's approach. Hulagu's forces approached Baghdad from the east, systematically destroying towns and cities along the way. His army included not only Mongol warriors, but also engineers and siege experts capable of overcoming formidable defenses. Preparations and diplomacy. The Abbasid Caliph Al-Mustasim attempted to negotiate with Hulagu, but the Mongol leader demanded complete surrender. Al-Mustasim's indecisiveness and refusal to submit sealed Baghdad's fate. The siege. The siege of Baghdad began in January 1258. The Mongols used their superior siege tactics to breach the city's defenses. Hulagu's forces surrounded the city, cutting off supplies and bombarding the walls with catapults and other siege engines. The fall of Baghdad. By mid-February, the city's defenses were overwhelmed and the Mongols stormed Baghdad. What followed was one of the most horrific massacres in history. Massacre and destruction the Mongols unleashed a brutal slaughter upon the inhabitants of Baghdad. Estimates of the death toll vary, but it is believed that hundreds of thousands of people were killed. The city was looted and burned. Its palaces, mosques, libraries, and markets destroyed. Destruction of knowledge. 
the sacking of Baghdad marked a significant cultural loss. The House of Wisdom, the Great Library of Baghdad, was destroyed, and countless priceless manuscripts and books were lost to the flames or thrown into the Tigris River. Death of the Caliph Caliph al-Mustasim was captured and executed by the Mongols, symbolizing the end of the Abbasid Caliphate's political authority. The Aftermath The fall of Baghdad in 1258 had profound and lasting impacts on the Islamic world and beyond. End of the Abbasid Caliphate The fall of Baghdad marked the effective end of the Abbasid Caliphate as a political entity. Although a symbolic Abbasid Caliphate continued in Cairo under the Mamluks, it held no real power. The fall of Baghdad's aftermath and its wider effect. The Mongol throne following Baghdad the conquests of Hulagu Khan. Hulagu Khan carried on his campaign to extend Mongol dominance in the Middle East following the fall of Baghdad. His next objective was Syria, where he encountered fierce opposition despite some early wins. Hulagu's conquest of Aleppo and Damascus allowed the Mongols to expand their power even farther into Syria and the Levant. But news of the great Khan Munka's death in 1259 cut short his operations, forcing Hulagu to return to Mongolia to oversee the succession. Battle of Ain Jalut. In the Battle of Ain Jalut in Palestine in 1260, the Mamluks of Egypt soundly defeated the Mongols. The Mongol army's westward advance was stopped by this fight, which also represented their first major setback. Additionally, it cemented the Mamluk Sultanate's position as the leading force in the Middle East. The Ilkhanate, a Mongol kingdom including parts of modern-day Iran, Iraq, Turkey and the Caucasus, was founded in Persia by the Ilkhanate Hulagu. The region's political and cultural environment was greatly influenced by the Ilkhanate. Cultural Syncretism the Mongol emperors were greatly impacted by Persian customs and culture throughout the Ilkhanate. Many Mongols eventually converted to Islam and blended their customs with those of the surrounding people. Economic impact. Some areas ravaged by the Mongol invasions were rebuilt in part because to the Ilkhanate. They promoted trade along the Silk Road, an essential route for the exchange of goods and ideas between the East and the West. The Sultanate of Mamluk. After the Mongol invasion, the Mamluk Sultanate, which had its capital in Egypt, grew to become a strong Islamic nation. Their conquest at Ain Jalut and subsequent resistance to Mongol attacks cemented their hegemony over the area. Hub of culture and intelligence, Cairo emerged as a new hub for Islamic scholarship and culture, partly occupying the space left by Baghdad's fall. The Mamluks promoted academia, the arts and architecture, while upholding and developing Islamic culture. Political stability. The Mamluks created a comparatively long-lasting and stable political framework that facilitated regional economic and cultural growth. The Mongol Empire's Dissolution. Once the greatest contiguous land empire in history, the Mongol Empire gradually broke up into a number of Khanates, each with its own unique identity and system of government. Ilkhanate. As previously noted, the Persian Ilkhanate was a major player in the Middle East until its fall in the 14th century as a result of both internal conflict and outside influences. Golden Horde. The Golden Horde ruled over a large portion of Russia and Eastern Europe to the north, having a profound impact on the history and development of the area. Yuan Dynasty and Chagatai Khanate. The Yuan Dynasty, which governed China until 1368, and the Chagatai Khanate, which ruled Central Asia, were two more Mongol Empire outposts. The long-term effects on intellectual and cultural changes in the Islamic world. An important intellectual and cultural revolution occurred in the Islamic world as a result of the Mongol invaders' destruction of Baghdad and other cultural sites. Knowledge transmission and preservation. Although a large number of manuscripts and artworks were lost, other areas, like Cairo and eventually the Ottoman Empire, became new hubs for knowledge transmission and preservation. 
cultural synthesis. A synthesis of cultures resulted from the interactions between the Mongol emperors and their subjects. For instance, Islamic and Persian customs had a big impact on Mongol society and government in the Ilkhanate. Realignments in politics. The collapse of the Abbasid Caliphate and the fall of Baghdad caused new political upheavals throughout the Islamic world. The fall of the Abbasid Caliphate paved the way for the rise of regional powers like the Ottomans, Safavids and Mamluks, each of whom had a unique influence on the Middle East's political and cultural environment. Ottoman Ascendancy A new era in Islamic history began with the eventual ascent of the Ottoman Empire in the late 13th and early 14th centuries. Up to the early 20th century, the Ottomans ruled over a wide and resilient empire. In summary, an important turning point that signalled the end of the Abbasid Caliphate's rule and the start of a new one in the Middle East was the fall of Baghdad in 1258. While there was a great deal of loss and destruction in the early aftermath, the Islamic world was also altered and new powers rose to prominence. Despite their destructive nature, the Mongol invasions promoted intellectual and cultural contacts that had a long-lasting impact on the region's development. The aftermath of Baghdad's collapse serves as a constant reminder of the adaptability of civilizations and the constantly shifting historical dynamics of power and culture.